Guys, welcome to the Born Offside podcast. Today we are talking about club or cup football. Which one do you prefer? We're also looking at Delhi Alley. Was he too overdressed for his Everton debut? And uh, was he judged too harshly for it? And finally, we're going to talk about whether or not mental health is better with football. I know for me, fantasy football makes my mental health all over the place, but let's see what everyone else thinks. Tune in now. Hello, hello, what's happening guys? Welcome back to the Born Offside podcast about a huge week of football, FA Cup, plenty of cups actually here mm. and abroad, plenty of football to get to as well and I'll welcome back the usual suspects, Olan Tackers and kicking off with Kat. Kat, hello, how are you? Hello, hello, I'm well, how are you? Good. Are you going to keep that accent up the whole time? Yeah, if you that? want me to, I will. I <laughs> love a British accent there. Kat was just telling us offline about how she met Joey Essex. Uh, I did. We had like, a, I'm going to stop now. We had, <laughs> we had a good chat. He was telling me all about his life. Is he a football um, man? He is. 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 He is I think he goes for Middlesbrough. Mm. Oh, really? Well, Does that make Essex sense? Lad. Yeah, for Middlesbrough. Yeah, he, anyway, he was, it's a championship team. They're def- definitely not in the Prem. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, he would have had a good weekend. Olan Tekkers, how are you, mate? How oh, are we? Good. Doing good, man. Just uh, doing the normal stuff, you know, creating content. Doing what I do. Doing what you do. Yeah. Watching some Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight. Yeah. Like, what a show, by the way. <laughs> Australians. <laughs> <laughs> Reality TV with Australians is always gold. It's top shelf. Isn't it's it? embarrassing, actually. <laughs> it is <laughs> embarrassing. It's great stuff. I love it. Great material for you and your TikToks. <laughs> and uh, I want to I want to quiz you guys quickly. Do you yeah. know why I'm wearing this jersey? I'm wearing a Wren kit today. Wren's French, yeah. From the French League. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I'd be wearing this? Uh, the only... What balls do they have out of uh, Wren? I'm celebrating someone that used to play there. Doesn't play there anymore. Still playing He's football? still playing. He's playing for someone's favourite club on this couch. And, uh, is it Sadio Mane? It's not Sadio Mane. Someone's but you're, you're very it? warm. I'm wearing it for, in my opinion, the greatest goalkeeper in world football at the moment, Edouard <gasps> Mendy. Oh, ah. Mendy. Oh, man, I should have... All right. that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I got the right okay. team, so. The Mendy, greatest. Who is now. I'm a big fan of it. He's now champion of yeah. Africa. What a couple years it's mm. been. And he was like unemployed. Incredible. It's a great being story. A Champions League winner and African Cup winner as yeah. well. Oh, that's a massive man. FIFA Best Awards. He won Best Goalkeeper as well. Very well deserved. And Senegal win the AFCON after a nil nil draw despite Sadio Mane. That man you mentioned missed a penalty in, in normal time, then scored his in the shootout. They beat yeah. Egypt. Cat so close. I know. So close for you. It was. It was a great game to watch. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Mm. Loads of action. Uh, but you know what? Senegal, I'm glad they won. Mm. They haven't won one. It's their first one, yeah. Yeah. And Egypt have had a few. So, yeah. you know, they'll be fine. Egypt are the most successful team yes. in that competition. And um, a shout out to Gabal, who did an amazing yeah. job goalkeeping. Yeah. Speaking of Mendy, but I think the that Egyptian keeper did unreal. just yeah, as yeah. well. It, it felt like Senegal versus him yeah. at times, yeah. truly. Wow. He, he, yeah, he's a machine. And there was a lot made about Mo Salah going up to him and apparently telling him which way Mane yeah. was going to go. Really? How's that for a teammate? I yeah, love I mean, it. there's 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 <laughs> no there's no rules when they're, when it's the final. Come on, man, there's no rules. So someone tells me those two don't like each other. I think really? I personally think they're it's like a love hate. Yeah, no, I think it's like a love hate. Like, yeah. like you know, like the brotherly, but it's like you hate him at the same yeah. time. But like you hate. <laughs> well, him, they you keep love him. meeting in instances yeah. like this. I mean, it's always going to challenge the friendship a little bit. But I think what you saw at the end of that game was a bit of a testament to the fact that yeah. the you know the camaraderie yeah. kind of outweighs the rivalry at the yeah. end of the day. What about Liverpool? posting like the, <laughs> the like was it the Mane picture like champions I was like they were gonna post anyway yeah they had both Salah with the yeah. one <laughs> or Mane with the one they no, would have had to post they had both ready to go yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they had funny. two ready uh, four four is my key number I'm, I've got numbers that I'm gonna <laughs> throw at you today okay, four is a number that I wanna bring up about the Egyptians mm. because that's the amount of times that they went past 90 minutes in this tournament. They didn't actually win wow. any in the knockout phase. They needed yeah. extra time once and three penalty shootouts after wow. zero zero draws. So to be honest with you, I would have been filthy if they won. Yeah, okay. That's, heavy, a, that's heavy legs. It was an ugly road that's to the final. Legs. That's tiring. I'm tired. I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. Four games going yeah. into extra time. Yeah, that's heavy legs. That's recovery, ice baths. And just for some more sauce on that fixture, Senegal meet Egypt again for mm. a place in Qatar in, in a cool. month's time. So those two are playing. Ooh. That's going to be huge. Yeah. All kinds of blazing that game. Yeah. So what do you reckon happens to that game? Mm. Oh, I mean, I hope it's Egypt. Yeah, but yeah Egypt, yeah. Let's Senegal's see. team is just so stacked. They are I mean, people they were saying are in the comments when I did the Mendy video that, like, Mendy could win the World Cup as well. Can you imagine? Ah, uh, that'd be great. I mean, the day will that come. I can't yeah. wait. The day will come for an African nation to, to win the win World the, Cup. Because yeah. and they are, they are. I would say, starting lineup wise, when I look at their players yeah, the on the park, like the, I think the it's backbone. the best African team ever. The backbone yeah. is unreal. I think so. 
and, 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 and is unreal. Yeah, they underperformed in 2018 by not getting out of the group. Mm. I think they'll go a little bit better. I, I'd one, agree so. with that. And I also think them winning this, yeah. AFCON, was Give a big deal yeah. too. Because if you think about it, historically, they haven't had it. Yeah. Mm. They've obviously found what they're, what's what been missing. Yeah. Mm. And they stuck with the same gaffer as well. That wasn't delivering for them for a while. They've stuck with him. He's now mm. won. So watch this space. Senegal's yeah. going on a run. Yeah. Why not? There was a huge storyline. We had continental trophies going left, right and centre because in the women's game, yes. the Matildas, bombed out as we know oh, and yeah, Kat, yeah. you know mystic cat predicted that one <laughs> yeah. mystic cat also predicted china to win the whole thing what she did so we could call your women's football <laughs> expert look at you I know. she knows what she's talking about <laughs> is that a thing now we got we got call it we that got. call it luck i don't know <laughs> i'm not gonna come i'm that's not big. gonna that's big claim you, any kind of predicts, experts you need to predict something else now then we yeah. know liverpool okay. to win the champions league yeah you already predicted that though yeah but my turn okay cool like It'll clip actually it. happen clip it. if I do it. Shabs, producer clip Shabs. It. Clip it. <laughs> Big for them. China came back from 2-0 down. Uh, the South Koreans, who, of course, knocked Australia out earlier in that tournament, will be kicking themselves 2-0 up. I and know. then on top of that, they had a, a huge chance in stoppage time to win the game. Mm. Literally, I mean, it was a great effort, but she could have hit it anywhere but straight at the goalkeeper. And then a minute later, China win the game 3-2. Chi- wow. That's China's ninth Asian Cup in the women's Whoa. game. The most successful female Dominance. team in Asia. Dominance. Yeah, it's dominance. Yeah, they're a powerhouse. Huge. And, really uh, good. Australia got to have a long look at themselves, right? <sighs> this is the theme of the last two weeks, I feel. <laughs> yeah, we bashed them last week, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, but to in saying gas. that, I posted, you know, my Matilda's reaction mm. on TikTok yeah. and there was a lot of commentary yeah. and people agreed with us yeah. that, that something needed to change and whether it's to do with the gaffer or if, mm. you know, it's actually just there's too much reliant on Sam Kerr and we mm. need to get a little bit of backup in that team. I don't know, but it was interesting to see most people agree with us. Mm-hmm. Shocking. You know, some people disagreed with us at one point, you know. Thoughts? Well, you 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 were <laughs> in a Twitter war. What are you doing on Twitter, man? Hey, listen, if you want Twitter beef, I've got these Twitter things are you ready. Not, so are you come 50 at me on years old? What are you don't doing on Twitter? On Twitter. Everything, listen, in the real world, the still on Twitter? Let's I'm a gentleman, real. but when it comes to Twitter, I can, I'll, come back, I'll come back at you. But people were coming at us, you know what I'm saying, Cap? If... Yeah, there's certain things if you're gonna say it, we're gonna respond. Exactly. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. So what was the people were trying to say? I don't that know. You it's were, like there was allegations it's, it's, against it's you like, on Twitter. You know what is close when you when you start to get to the top, <laughs> the game a little bit. <laughs> some people try and creep in. You know, haters yeah. try and creep in, but yeah. we don't listen to the background noise. You know, no. what I'm saying that's all I'm gonna say. On you that respond line. to it though. <laughs> I responded. <laughs> yeah, shit. yeah. Shit. You I gave bought. them. You gave <laughs> them what they wanted. Yeah. But I think people know. Mm. I did my research on those people that tweeted you as well. well didn't, I didn't know who they were. So who I did my research and... Who were they? G- journos. I'm journos. still not sure. Yeah. Bloody journos. Yeah, that's all good. You know, they got to have their moment and they're, they're yeah. all entitled to their opinion. And uh, sometimes I wish I could build a time machine yeah. so that I could give it to the journos and they could go back to a time when journos were really relevant. You know? <laughs> that's a good one. But anyway. Like you know, can I just say on that though? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> it's a little ironic though. Why? That a journo doesn't do their research before making a comment like that. Wow, what yeah. do you mean? That is every journo ever. It's just no. Well, okay, fair I, enough. What I found but ironic was that the journos were saying like about Olin saying it was like kind of clickbaity what he was yeah. like, you know, you're trying to sell a yeah. headline on something. And I'm like, brother, isn't that like your, your whole career? Isn't that what you guys do? Literally. Like, it's called literally. a news headline. Yeah. Literally. Look, mate, if I was you, Olin, honestly, I love you, mate. And if I was you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even worry about it because I don't know how many views your TikTok gets. <laughs> but that's probably more than everyone there combined. Know, and you know, it makes so sense. It makes sense so why they hate him. Let them, let them hate. We let move, hate. We move, we move. Hate Keep writing articles, hate. guys. It'll get you far. Um, <laughs> so now we're going to move on to the next number of the day. My next number of the day is 15. Okay. Right. This is Diego Simeone. Okay. Ooh. Was battered by Barcelona, yeah. a club which you have strong affiliation for, Cat, of course, lived over there. Yeah. Barca go back into the top four. It's happy days for Xavi. Simeone, 15 times at the new camp. He's never beaten Barca. Really? He's it's his bogey like, That's cursed. a mad stat. Yeah. Yeah. I would never have thought that. And That's it's mad. Atletico Madrid as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Even Huge. like in this this legacy of Barca, this but you'd think that he'd mm. get the one over them. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? It, you'd think because of this win, mm. it's because Barca are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the history and you're like, okay, also Atletico walk in there and they're like Yeah, it's a mental thing. They feel like they're gonna lose already. And he he commented back on that game and was just like it's actually it's not because that team is good, it's because we didn't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah. So if you think any credit. Yeah. If you think it's because Barcelona is there's this revival going on, Mm, Simeone disagrees. (laughs) Well Simeone has not been the Simeone that we know and love. I mean usually he's a defensive mastermind. He's conceded more than the entire top nine in La Liga this season, which is very rare for him. So watch this space. I think it might be time for him to move on. 
really? Mm. And I think I think a lot of clubs would take him. He's one of those he's one of those gaffers where it's like, it's just when you think of Atletico Madrid, you think of him. Yeah, you know totally. what I mean. It'd be, it'd be weird, weird without it'd be him. Weird it? for him to be anywhere yeah. else. You know what I mean. I think yeah. it's very weird that like managers like that stay for that long. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I, I wouldn't want to see him anywhere else unless it was the Prem. I'd probably want to see him in the Prem. You take him in the Prem. He's, he's an absolute oh, character. He's a character. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. We, we didn't have Prem football over the weekend, but we had mm. FA Cup, and there was Oof. plenty of cup sets. And it got me actually thinking about cup something. sets. I love that. <laughs> you like that one? I like that. Cup sets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little play on words. Cheeky play on words for you for your Tuesday morning. Um. But I wanted to ask you guys a little about that because we had great games left, right and centre and Premier League clubs and the gap seemed so small mm. because Chelsea were forced to go to extra time against Plymouth, right? Former A-League yeah, player Yeah, scored. people were trying to come at me for that. Yeah. That was a great goal, <laughs> because by I, the way. Because I roasted United for losing and then Chelsea were 1-0 down. <laughs> I was you need shitting to be myself, careful. by the way. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to be coming at me. I was like, come on, boys. Come on, boys. If there's any time for, two, for you to pull it around, pull it around now. But thankfully, yeah. we came yeah. through. And yeah. they did. And West Ham did the same thing. They came through late. Southampton came through late wasn't the same for Leicester who bombed out to Nottingham as you said United. also has anyone here ever played in the FA Cup I've played in the FA Cup oh, I put, <laughs> I'm just, just going to put it out there I've played in the FA Cup yeah you know, moving on yeah. <laughs> what well, I thought that there was beginning stages. <laughs> 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 don't worry about that it was the beginning stages there was a lot of money involved but I can tell, I can tell my grandkids you yeah know, that cup what there, club was that for that was for St. Neers we, we okay. reached around before it goes on TV. So we had to play, like it was like the, f- I can't remember what round it was, but it was basically after this round, like the League Two teams came in. Okay, but yeah. we got absolutely slapped. It was like 4 0. Yeah. But it was a decent crowd. It Still was FA Cup. Good, yeah, yeah. Good experience, you know. There what you mean? go. Add yeah. it to the CV. Yeah. Huge. CV. CV's large, mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm 10 mil. Dushan Blaovic I'm, last I'm week. worth 10 mil. I keep telling people. <laughs> they, don't, they don't believe me. They think I'm just still talk. Huge. Huge. And I, like, I was looking at that competition and I was thinking it is the oldest competition in world yeah. football. And, and in the same weekend, we had the FFA Cup here. Yes. Melbourne victory winner. Yeah. 2 1. Great game. Pat How crowd. good was Davidson's the goal? I think it's poor keeping. Oh. <laughs> It's well, that's a that's sad. Oh, lad, let me, as a defender, you, you're in the wall, yeah. Mm. Let's say, and you're covering near post. Yes. And then the striker bends it back to the keeper's yeah, side. Yeah. You turn around and you you, you look at the you're keeper. Filthy, like, eh? Yeah, you're a little because he's because what's happening is he keeper moved trying very, to cheat. Yes. You're right. Keeper trying to cheat and go that way. Yeah. And he's bent in that side. So. And he's like, also you've got your defenders there, and he's gone. Yeah. Where he should have. Where, the where they were. You where know the what? If Jason Davidson goes over the wall and in at the near post. You applaud him. It's a good point. Right, mm. but it's if he goes keeper's side, mm. you got to ask questions okay. of Berry Giddy. But It's a good point. It, it, was very but he did s- it was still very well placed. It was yeah, very yeah, well yeah. It was top bins. Yes. I, I thought the second goal was gorgeous. Mm. The chest and volley for Melbourne yeah. to seal it in, in stoppage but time. Melbourne have had, kind of had a turnaround year. Oh, correct? yeah. Brilliant. Last year, they yeah. Fin- did they finish last? Stinking. Yeah. Bottom of the, of the league. So, so It's nice. They've turned it around. Congrats Massive trophy. To them, man. They, congrats to them. Their second one. I, I, don't, I th- wanted to throw a little onside, offside your way because yeah. you know me. Uh, look, I always sing the praises of international football. You guys get cranky <laughs> yeah. at me for that one. My next one I was thinking was if you had yeah. to just, one had to disappear from existence, right? Oh, don't oh. do this again. Please. Cup football or league football, which would you rather keep? Well, cup football's n- the l- <sighs> shit. That's a hard one. Cup football because as I good as the league f- is, mm. if I'm if I'm a lower league club, yeah, I'm saying cup football. Yeah, because that's your chance yeah, to shine. Of course you that are. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> that's like the memories. But yeah. if I'm a, obviously if I'm a top end club, I'm probably saying league football. Is that fair? Based on what I saw this weekend, mm. there is something about those oh, FFA and yeah. FA Cups. Yeah. There's a heart in it that you like don't see at that higher level. People so turn up that wouldn't normally turn up. Yeah. You know? It's the same reason I've always wanted to see more of that mm. here. Like, you know, why the a league I mean, relegation and all that kind of stuff. Because mm. I feel like when you have that battle of the smaller team against the larger team. It's yeah. so good to see. There's yeah, like even it's unbelievable. Like we don't go home. Yeah, I love home. that. It's, it's, a one, it's a one match thing. Yeah. Do or die. Any, like, it's almost like anyone on a given day can turn up and yeah. beat them yeah. for yeah. one game. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's an amazing thing about yeah. the cup as well. So I love yeah. it. I love cup football. We need more cup football here, I think. Uh, England, they go way too much. There's a cup every oh, day. So I many, know. Too many cups, man. <laughs> I like, can't keep up. When you're playing non-league in England, you're in the, in the middle of like November, December, you're playing on a Tuesday night. 
<laughs> you get a rest of the Thursday, you're playing on the Saturday, you might, and then you're playing on the Monday again. You've got like three games a week yeah. sometimes. It's, you don't get any rest. The Papa John's Trophy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, you literally <laughs> played in any sort of cup. You can't even know the name of this one. What's this one? All right, we're playing it. They make a cup for the sponsor. Yeah, literally, yeah. literally, yeah. literally yeah. there's, any, there's yeah. any type of cup there. It's crazy. Love it, love it. Um, some random news stories I'm going to bring out now from the world of football, random ones that, that we dug out. One was a uh, daughter of NBA Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Trinity. I don't yeah. know if you saw this. She's now signed the richest deal in the women's league over there in US history. 19 years of age, she signed a 14, uh, four, four year deal worth one and a half, over one and a half million dollars. Wow. Dennis Rodman, so runs in the family. Wow. Yeah. So that's for her playing basketball, correct? Play football, mate. Wait. No, she's signed with the yeah. women's si- football. He's playing a basketball for Washington player. Spirit. Oh. She's a oh, she's playing for Washington, Washington Spirit. She's playing football. Fuck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's Wait, so she's fresh out of... she gone to college. Yeah. She's, she's fresh 19, out, yeah. She's fresh out of college and she's Straight signed into the professional league, wow, yeah. I haven't, I haven't, I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen her, but I'm going to need to see some clips. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Dennis thrown, Rodman was a character yeah, and a half, so let's hope she's yeah. the same. Yeah. Throwing that sort of money at her, she yeah. has to be I the next... I love that, though. You know? I love the sport families like that, yeah. Yeah. where it's just... It's in the genes. Th- it's in the genes, but then it gets channeled into a different sport. Yeah, it's so cool. yeah, yeah. It's almost like when you like people say like, what would happen if like LeBron James played a different sport? Yeah, yeah. and then maybe he's like Dennis Rodman's daughter's playing something different. Yeah, you know, so and cool. similar yeah. sort of thing. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I thought that's that was huge. a that was a nice, real good story. Yeah, I love that. Sure. That's and huge for nice the women's game as well. You know? Exactly like right. That. Superstars now already in the women's game. US. I'm going to stick with them as well because last week there was some World Cup qualifiers. USA played Honduras in the coldest game. Ever. Oh, I think, is that, is that the match that Alfonso Davis was commentating on? Like in yeah, the snow? yeah. Yeah. Two players were actually taken to be treated for hypothermia after the game. It was played in minus 17 degrees. Wow. Celsius? Celsius. Wow. That no. is a cold Tuesday night in St- Stoke. That's, that's <laughs> worse than a cold Tuesday night in Stoke. I was that's thinking, what's the coldest game you've ever played? You would have played in some oh cold man, games over there in the UK. I've, you know, it's not... <laughs> It's the worst. Pl- it's worse. It's, it's it's not bad playing in them. It's worse sitting on the bench for them. Yeah, because <laughs> Gaffer tells you to warm up at half time. You're like, mate, I can't feel my toes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean warm up? So now nah, I've played in some really cold games. When when it gets to that ch- cold Tuesday night on, in England, it's like whoever can feel their feet the most wins. Really. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's what it is. I, like when I was over there, yeah. I lost feeling in my feet. I was oh, up yeah. in Wigan. And we did a fitness oh session once. They took us to a running That's track. The worst. Your feet just feel like. And every step, I just yeah, pin, like, uh, and then pins and needles like is good. The, what's worse when you don't even feel pins <laughs> and needles? Feel you, just you, don't you don't feel your feet, feet off. You yeah. just feel like clubbers. Like your foot, yeah. you don't even know. Like Gosh. If you're just kicking the ball. Like you're hoping that it's gonna go <laughs> <laughs> where, where you want it oh to go. Goodness. But nah, yeah. In yeah, the no, cold, no, no, no. a professional game like that would be insane in the cold. That's crazy. Yeah, I've not experienced anything like that. USA won that one, correct? Yeah. Yeah, win, yeah, yeah. So they they're still on track, but Canada top of the top of the leaderboard to go straight to Qatar twenty two. So they've they've got a cracking awesome. generation of footballers as well. Uh, another storyline I was gonna bring up was uh, Man United obviously were knocked out of the FA Cup and Ole made had sure a t- everyone was in the mud. Everyone in the mud. <laughs> in the mud. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. <laughs> made sure it. everyone knew on social. But I don't know if you saw this one off pitch, right? A Middlesbrough fan. Yeah. Travelled to the game <gasps> with his kid. Did you I don't know if you saw this. Eleven year old kid. They win the game. He leaves the kid in the hotel room and goes out on the piss all night. Oh, my God. Right. The, the, the boy's mum had to call the police and ended up driving to collect the child. It was all sorted out, but Duh. left the kid in the hotel to go drinking with go the lads. Go on the piss. That's so English. To be fair, Middlesbrough haven't knocked him out for 20 <laughs> years in the <laughs> FA Cup, right? <laughs> yes. So that I mean, makes it okay. That makes it okay. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen hotel. every day. This is what I'm trying to say. sprung the kid with him, to be honest. <laughs> that would have been a bit better. Is that better parenting? Yeah. Like, I was going to say, onside go or offside, leaving, leaving your kid in the hotel room to go. I think that's VAR. It hasn't happened Low in 20 key, years. though, like I was definitely left home alone at that age. Yeah? Definitely, Shit. yeah. So you're yeah, but not in a I hotel room in the middle of somewhere that you don't know where it is. In the middle of Manchester. I hope that's fine, but in the middle of Manchester, it's a little yeah, bit yeah. different. I mean, hire a babysitter. Damn. Yeah. But it's last minute. You've just gone out. Like it's called the. He didn't expect. I don't think he expected that yeah, result. <laughs> yeah, that's that's mad. You reckon he's just walking out and he's getting these messages like, "Yeah, let's get on the piss, 100%. blah blah blah," and he's like, "What am I going to do with my kid?" Yeah, <laughs> well, I've got this eleven-year-old. Yeah. You know what? Lucky I got a hotel room. Yeah, yeah no, just cool. chuck YouTube on. There you go. Watch <laughs> this, son. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> Doesn't come back for five hours. <laughs> no, that's quality. That's quality. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah to be fair, credit to the Borough fans. Yeah, they had nine and a half thousand people travel to Old wow. Trafford, so it was cracking. I love that. Support. Isn't that great? Yeah. There was so club. much energy in that stadium yeah. watching that game. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Brilliant. Um, this is a different storyline. Pretty random. A-League football. Yeah. I'm okay, going to bring it back, back here. Right, Sydney FC 
played Adelaide and, and I saw this post go up on the socials. I thought this was a bit random. I wanted to ask. They, they've grabbed the Sydney FC goalkeeper, right? Heward Bell. And they've showed his statistics for the match. Now, right. uh, this was posted on, on A-League socials, right? Can you read some of those stats that they've got there? We've got Can successful passes, yep. 12. Yeah. <laughs> Saves, 8. Okay. Pickups, 4. Yep. Penalties saved, 1. Okay. Well then, what was any of them a bit weird to you? Successful passes. Why do we care about his passes? Keep going. Pickups. <laughs> What's a pickup? What, what is, is that how many times he picked pick the ball up? up? Is that every time he picked the ball up? I don't know. What? I've never seen that. I've I looked at this. I've never seen that before. Thought, what passes, kind of stat is that? Saves, pickups. I thought this is Olan Tekka's stats at Kuji Pav. <laughs> at Kuji Pav on a night out. I'm four pick, pickups for I'm you is pretty good on a night four out. I'm yeah. on a Kuji night out. I'm picking up at least five are you, or six. Are you getting about four pickups? There's numbers, right? It's numbers. Yeah. How many numbers are you picking up? At least four to five numbers. <laughs> average. Right. I mean, I thought that was bizarre. Is that a typo or? No, apparently pickups is a new stat that. Uh, okay. So you know, tough news day. You got to just. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got to. Anyway. <laughs> you got to you got to get out what you can get out. You know, on a tough <laughs> news day. It's a slow day. Anyways, uh, look. Regardless. Uh, <laughs> Love the A-Leagues. They yeah. come up with some random shit, but we love it. Uh, I want to go to some of the questions we got in from our fans now f before our episode every single week, guys. If you haven't, make sure you follow us on our socials because we put up every time we're going to record a podcast, we ask you guys for the questions. The questions come rolling in and most okay. of the time it's already what we're going to talk about. I love that. When I've got an idea, I've got a nugget and yeah. someone asks that question, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's we my man. Questions, guys. Mark Banny goes, opinion regarding Delhi Ali's drip on Oof. his unveiling on the weekend. There was a lot made about this, Olin. I didn't know what was wrong with his drip. What, what was wrong with it? The drip was fire for me. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Was it because he's wearing luxury brands? Yeah, but I think there's always that persona <laughs> around someone that's... They don't, they don't... Some people don't want Premier League footballers to have a personality. They know yeah. the way they hate Pogba, how he dresses or how he dances or have a little bit of flair, especially when their career might not be going yeah. where people think it should be. So yeah. they got, they've got an opinion on it. Like I think there was even another quote that says, like, he showed up in a Rolls Royce. He, he showed, yeah, he, like, he drove a Rolls Royce. Was he supposed to come in a bicycle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he owns a Rolls Royce. Like, what do you mean? If I got a Rolls Royce, I'm going everywhere in it. Yeah, so I just no. don't understand that persona around like, you can't have a personality if you're like a Premier League footballer. You know what I mean? Yeah. This goes back to what you said last week, Claude, mm. about footballers kind of living in another reality. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you also have to accept that the kind of money that they're on means that they drive nice cars, mm. they wear nice clothes. It's not a reflection of anything other than their fashion taste yeah. mm. or what they want to drive. Mm. We should be making comments about the way that he plays. Yeah. The day, if he goes out and bags goals on the weekend, who gives a shit? Exactly. Like, who cares? Who cares? Like, exactly. And uh, I think that's the whole argument that He's not in a position because I guarantee you, if he's flying, his career's going well, and he's oh, yeah. just come off fifty goals from Tottenham, or maybe, no. and he's come off that season, then he goes to Everton and he does that. No one says a word. No, no one says an no island. No one should say anything. You know what I mean? So it's always in It's always in relation to how his career's going. Yeah, yeah. You know because I mean? because fans project. They're annoyed. Like, why is he living the good life when he's not doing anything good for our team? Facts. Yeah, Facts. and I get that because he's so new to Everton as well. Yeah, but. Ah, come on it's they're footballers just, exactly. they're, they're in their 20s and they've got millions of dollars what do you expect him to wear but regardless I think we, we agree that media might be being a bit yes, harsh I on Deli so. Alley. Uh, can Frank Lampard get the best out of him though do you think we're going to see the old Deli Alley come out I actually think yes yeah. and I know for a fact that Lampard loves Deli Alley. yeah back in I think it was 2017 or something I saw an interview where Lampard was going on about how much potential he saw in him <laughs> and I think the obviously he's had a couple of a couple, a couple of tough <laughs> seasons. Excuse me, getting ahead of myself. Uh, with, with um Spurs, but I don't know. I reckon if anyone can do it for him, it's Lampard. Oh, and he, yeah. he was kind of when he when he burst on the scene, he was like this out and out ten that yeah. we hadn't That's seen. Amazing. His most recent game he played for Conte was playing box to box, kind of running. Do you, do you want him to go back to that out I and out ten I creative reckon, player? And I think I saw a TikTok about it where that kind of explained what happened to Deli Ali or. The pos like his 10 role positioning mm. kind of disappeared because he was best when he was like people kept comparing him to Lampard remember that breakout yeah. season they were like he's just in the right place at the right time yeah. to be able to score the goals yeah. Yeah. now to be able to play in that sort of position you've got to be like a number 10 or sniff out or a second striker where he kind of wasn't that for Tottenham yeah. I think mm. that, that position kind of disappeared and then he just I guess confidence started to go downhill but like Kat said I think if there's anyone that can get it out of him is Lampard and I would love to see him like back to where he's flying. Yeah. Or I've got a question for you two. Mm. Did he, which was a question, did he just peak too early? 
Like, yeah. is can he get yeah, back to level, or did he peak too early? Highly mm. possible that he did. I think if you watch him play for Spurs, it's always frustrated me that he's a bit lazy mm. and he doesn't really make a run with the ball, like mm. if ever. What mm. he is good at is positional IQ. Like yeah, he knows so where good. to be, and that's something that is very hard to teach a player. Yeah. Teach it. But you can, you know, you can motivate a player to run more and to do those things. So did he peak too early? Maybe, but I feel like we need to give him some time at Everton to see mm. how he can turn it's it around. A, it's, a, it's almost, I think it's almost a match made in heaven. It's yeah. a perfect club for him because the players are there. It's a, it is a great starting lineup when everyone's fit. They've got the players to play football. It's not like he's ended up at Burnley no. or he's gone to a team that's just going to kick it and he's not that True. type of player. He's gone to a footballing side. He's going to line up with Richarlison and with players like that, Townsend going for great footballers. And I think this could be his time to shine. Lampard's a young gaffer. He knows he gets him. He's English as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it could work out for him. He also picked up Donny van der Beek, who we have barely seen since he arrived in the Premier League. Can he revive know. him as well? I still don't know what that guy plays like. I don't think I've seen him play more than 10 minutes. <laughs> van der Beek. It's such a but shame, when he, has, when he has played, he's good, though. He is, I've yeah, always liked him, yeah. and I've always seen a lot of potential in him. I think um, he just needs the minutes. Yeah. And I also think the fact that he's like out on loan gives him a little bit of that kind of, I can come in and I can help Everton you know, avoid relegation. Yeah. But if I might still have a, a future at United, yeah. depending on kind of how I go. I think it's a very different situation for him versus Deli Ali in yeah. terms of motivation anyway. Yeah. yeah, it is very different. He has never really hit those heights, definitely not in the Premier League, but I think it's probably a last straw for That's both those players. Yeah. That question was from Peter Slaveski who asked us there about Donny van der Beek. And um and really I just want to last kind of thing on this was because there was an unveiling that happened and the players came out were unveiled in front of the fans mm. also there was an unveiling for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang right during the week <laughs> Barcelona. at Barcelona I'm on my blood clot young right. he didn't I'm play on what? though I'm on my blood clot <laughs> young <laughs> he comes out right and he's juggled and he's juggled pretty safe he's done a couple <laughs> little keepy ups left right foot picked the ball up waved and then I saw this like compilation that got made of just all the players that have just sucked juggling oh, in their God. unveiling. Why oh. can players not juggle when they're unveiled for a team? I don't I get it. I think it's like the pressure of like, I'm supposed to be this big yeah. footballer. Have, have, have you ever seen Martin Braithwaite try and juggle when he, when he got signed for Barca? I think that was, was that the viral clip? Hey, was shit. It? There was it one where like, he literally man. couldn't do five kickups. Yeah. Like imagine that, like you sign for Barcelona and they're like, just, <laughs> just give us like a juggle like around the world and you just like literally... He it can't do. You barely can get it from right to left. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Like he's got a bad. Barcelona have a bad track record because oh. his was poor. Sergio Dest could not flick the ball up. Uh, Deo Hernandez signed for for Real Madrid, and he's after three juggles, it went up into the sky, and he had to just catch it and wave to the crowd. Oh. Like, and so, like I meant to do that. <laughs> you know why? Because these guys were following Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, oh. players that would yeah, go out there yeah, and, yeah, just and just do like, like around the world, around the world yeah. flick it over your head. Incredible. Close tackles. my eyes, juggle. Yeah, yeah football's crazy. lost something, hasn't it? It's know. lost something. These guys can't even juggle a ball, man. Come on, bring me back the old days, JJ Acocha and Ronaldinho and these that's guys. A bit, that's a Orba bit. Orbaino even didn't play against Atleti, did he? What? Orba, Orbaino, he didn't oh, play. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no, no. Uh, no they didn't play any better. of their new players. Don't need to. Yeah. Same with Super Frank. Didn't play any of his new yeah. players. Still had a massive win in the FA Cup. So mm. let's see. Transfer windows shut and the best were Juventus. Of course, both their new players both played, both scored. Yeah. And Juve are back in the top four of the Serie A. So watch this space. Jeez, those are some good signings. Mm. Cracker signings for them. I've got a great storyline. Listen to this one out of Turkey. Hit me. I love anything. Love any stories come out of Turkey. They're always good. <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> always uh, Turkish good. football. Uh, besides Mario Balotelli scoring again, by the way, he's on fire. It, Listen man. to this one. Turkish side. I'll do my best here. Eskeshihan Sport. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll <laughs> take it. We'll take I'll it. I'll I'm not going to correct you. 15-year-old goalkeeper. Egehan Has. Sorry, 15? 15-year-old goalkeeper. Yeah. Right? Posted a picture on his social, working out in the gym. He was wearing a Nike Galatasaray shirt. Oofed. Risky. And he plays for... <laughs> Oofed indeed, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Such a walk. I love that. Oofed, <laughs> guys. Ooka. He, did, he didn't do that, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. That was haram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oofed indeed. Uh, his club ripped up his contract. Oh. Because, because he was training in a Galatasaray shirt. Wow. Can you believe this shit? That's a That's little bit... Wow. Onside or offside? It's a bit offside. Yeah? It's a, he's, 
He's 15. Is he playing? He's not signed the first. Like, tell he's still me, in the academy. Tell me this, though. Mm-hmm. Galatasaray is a, the equivalent of we're talking a Liverpool player wearing yes, an Everton exactly. jersey. Yeah. Okay. We're talking rivalry. Oh, no, not really. Like, because they're not anywhere near that level. So that, Do you know what I mean? It's not like he's playing for Fenerbahce and wearing Galatasaray. No, 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 no. That's, that's way offside. Yeah, especially at 15. It'd be like you playing for Luton wearing a Chelsea jersey. Like, no, on. that's yeah. not the same. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's the, not same. the same. No. Different leagues. I think that's a, I think that's a bit offside, especially as he's 15 years old. Like, you at least talk to the kid and be like, "Listen, yeah. this happens again." <laughs> Turkish, they don't fuck around. Yeah, it's ripped <laughs> up his contract. Jeez, what? I'm devastated if I'm that kid. That is unforgiving as hell. How's this for a turn of events, though? Don't tell me Galatasaray signed him. So now no Galatasaray way. have made contact with the kid, and there is talks that he may very well sign a contract with Galatasaray in the coming weeks. That is the. <laughs> that's class. That so is class. unbelievable. Talk about. A turn of events yeah. and having faith yeah. in what you want to do because that's class. Yeah, maybe that was. Turns his, out, maybe. I was just gonna say the kid knew the whole <laughs> maybe, time. Yeah, maybe he that was his like time. thing. He was like, you know, what? I'm gonna post a picture. Maybe they'll fire me and Galatasaray. Right? Yeah. You oh, know yeah, what? Imagine. That's one of the best football stories I've ever heard. Yeah, I just love that. Yeah, and, and I hope he like, ends up being one of Galatasaray's best. That's what I'm players saying. Imagine if he time. goes on to be like one of the greatest. What a story that'll be, right? Remember, like, remember how we signed him? And his old club's in the mud somewhere, like third or fourth division. Wow. With that attitude, they would be. Yeah. That's yeah. a good. That's a great story. I love that. Yeah, cracker story. I mean, there's always great we love story. a happy ending here on the yes. show. Um, <laughs> how's this one, right? We we all love football, and it gives you your highs and your lows. Um, and this study that came out from Bet Victor, random University of Leeds, okay. studied football fans between 20 and 62, followed them as they supported their clubs. That's a large demographic. Large demographic, man. Right? Football, football fans yeah. come in all shapes and sizes, True. and they found that football is in fact good for your health. Right, mm. that going to watch your team live lifts your heart rate, blood pressure, and mood just the right amount, and it's almost equivalent to exercise. Wow! Wow! So oh we're no. we're burning calories. However, yeah. oh no! <laughs> However, well, there calories. was a downside. If your team's losing, if your team's <laughs> shit, so if you support Arsenal, depression. <laughs> <laughs> if you support Arsenal or someone in the bottom half, what happens? Apparently, it can negatively impact your mood, your blood pressure, and everything, which then can also be because okay. like, basically it's saying that explains a lot. Be a plastic fan when you can. Yeah, that explains <laughs> a lot as to why so Arsenal fans are so is miserable <laughs> 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 and stressed Man's, out. Yeah, and s- City fans are doing really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all really, really three really of them. Well. All, yeah, three, all of them. three of them. <laughs> Super healthy, <laughs> mental That's health crazy. on check. So basically, like, you can be almost depressed or if you're supporting a shit team. Yeah. And then you can be almost but it can be in great shape. Yeah. Do you know what, though? So at the end of your life, like, depending on maybe how long you lived or how healthy you were, could your football club could have something to do with that. The that team that you insane. support. That's insane. That's a great, but you know that's what? A great piece of information. Are either of you actually surprised by that? Like, when you think of the emotional and, like, physical experience that you go like through you when you're life, watching lo- a football game. Yeah. yeah. I've been. I've experienced all those things: the high blood pressure, yeah. the heart rate, all those things. But I think also when you're invested in like a fantasy side of a sport too, yeah, here we go that takes a here we go with fantasy. Here we go with you and your fantasy, fantasy football. I'm just like you in international football. You in fantasy. <laughs> I'm just a normal fucking fan here. <laughs> <laughs> you two are yeah, both right. indulging in something. I'm That's a normal really fan. I'm a normal fan. <laughs> That's but crazy. I but when you have that added pressure on top, yeah, and because you you're watching the scores and stuff like that, I'm sorry, yeah. any fantasy football fan will mm. agree with me, yeah. that it becomes an out of body experience. <laughs> you <Jesus>. feel physically <laughs> I've got, ill. I've got nothing to comment on. This. Like I've needed <laughs> days off work because because of, of fantasy football. Wait, you've taken days off work. I'm not going to say Let's hope your employer for, le- doesn't Jesus. for legal to reasons. I'm not going to say that I have or have not taken an actual <laughs> day off work, but I've definitely needed one. Yeah. Wow. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. That's better. Wow. Did Olin just call himself the normal football yeah, fan? Yeah, I'm glad that you heard that too. I've seen your TikTok. In the comments, some of the shit you I'm, guys I'm, Olan, I'm a normal you fan. normal, not a thing. I reckon yeah. I am. <laughs> the average guy that makes TikToks. Slides into Fred's wife's DMs. Yeah. I don't know. That's 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 <laughs> not It's not bring that up. Like he's probably <laughs> slid into so many DMs. Yeah. Yeah. God. Anyways. What? I don't anyway. slide into DMs. Don't anyway. Me. Sorry, all that. Another, <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that one short. I got a question <laughs> coming in from Tim Lewis. My like Tim. Now Chelsea, of course, are at the Club World Cup at the moment. They've just landed in Abu Dhabi and they're playing Al Ali from the Saudi Arabian mm. Pro League. Never Very heard good of team. Them. Very good team. They won the the uh, AFC Champions League. Is the Club World Cup? Considered a top tier trophy from Tim Lewis. Would you would you count that? Like when you look back on your career, right? You got the Champions League, your Premier League titles. You got, is the FIFA Club World Cup up there? I reckon because it's a new competition, correct? 
newish. Yeah, I just feel like it doesn't. It used hold to be a one-off playoff between Europe and South America. Now mm. they've added everyone. Yeah, I, d- I don't feel like it holds as much weight because it's newish. Like I don't really see. Like when I say Champions of Europe, UEFA Champions League, whoever wins that for me, they're the best team in the world. Yeah. Okay. Regardless. But does that just disregard the rest of the world? Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it does. Yes, it does. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, that's how I feel because I feel like if you're one of the best players, you're playing yeah. in the Champions League. Mm. So is it, in, it doesn't matter too much to you if Chelsea win or, or don't win this one. If the, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like, oh, we lost that one. We're not the we're not the best team in the world. That that, that wouldn't. You know what I mean? I, for sure. That's how I feel. I, I think you, you for honestly for me. It is nothing to do with the teams that play in it. It's mm. nothing to do with the sponsor, whether it's FIFA or whether it's Carabao or whoever it is. For me, it's how much do people care? How much yeah. do people tune in? How much do we talk about it? Exactly. Do we watch it? Exactly. So for me, it's not super important. Yeah. But it's not to say that for the players and that it's not an achievement. I just don't yeah. think that it's part of the, the discussion around the sport as much. Yeah. I'm going to be different as I always am on this Love podcast. You. I'm, I'm sure. going to say... You're not going to sit on the fence? I'm going to say I like the Club World Cup. I think the Club World Cup is fantastic. I think it's huge. Is and that because uh, Chelsea's doing well? I would say... Well, Chelsea actually haven't won it, right? So Chelsea lost it to Sao Paulo back in 2012 when we won the Champions League. Mm. Um, and I remember that from Brazil, they sent 50,000 fans. People like sold their house and shit to go watch them against Chelsea in the Club World Ooh. Cup. And they wow. won. And they won 1-0. And, and watching that game, the support was massive the, the there was yeah. never a doubt from the first kickoff like Chelsea were not in that game mm. and yeah. that was a great Chelsea so and I was watching it like oh we're gonna lose today man and, mm. we, and, and they did so I reckon lessons learned here they're playing Palmeiras another Brazilian yeah. team I saw the scenes when the Palmeiras team was going to the airport it, it was like the insane. street packed with people yeah. going insane like wishing them well as they fly off to go That's play cool. this so I do understand where you're coming from from a European perspective, yeah. but I think for the rest of the world, this is yeah. huge. Fair enough. And it's your chance to stick it to Europe, you know, particularly mm, for sure. the South Americans, right? Yeah, Which yeah, yeah. For fact. so many years, was probably the, the best football in the world for yeah. many years, right? Yeah. Isn't anymore, but this is their chance to say, we can still cut it with the Europeans, you know? So I, I that's, a point. that's a good that's, point. And that's, I guess, coming from the perspective of people who, you know, support those teams and come from those countries, yeah. obviously the meaning is different. So I come as an Aussie who goes for Liverpool, I guess for us, we look, we, we, we watch other competitions more so. Well, Al Ali from uh, Egypt is actually doing yeah. really well. They're doing really well as well. They beat Monterey, who were the North American champions, and they take on Palmeiras in the semi final. Uh, don't get Al Ali confused with Al Hilal, because that's the. <laughs> I'm, 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 my head's gone at the moment. <laughs> heard too many Ali. I, I said, what was going on here? <laughs> you lost Olan at the DM call. <laughs> What? <laughs> Ali Ali? Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Prince Ali. Ali, Ali, Ali Ababa. Anyway. Uh, for those Disney fans out there listening. Um, <laughs> just lost half of our following. <laughs> 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 oh, God. It's been oh a great show. It's been a great it's week of football. Fun. The Premier League's back now this week, which is... Yay. Yeah. 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 Well, I always feel like I'm so excited. It's missing when the Premier League's on. It felt like it was like a month that we didn't have yeah, it. Yeah, it like so crazy time. how much we rely on that Premier League football. I know. You know I'm so it. excited. Lots to look forward to. A-League almost every day, which is good for those local football fans. Premier League's back and all the leagues are really heating up. Title race pretty much over in Germany. So you can forget about that one. Bayern Munich, nine points clear. But still all to play for pretty much over in England let's be real yeah. as well but relegation battle cracker top four battle great Premier League football each and every day we'll be here covering it next week I'm sure we're gonna have a lot to talk about next week on the show but guys final thoughts Kat you got much on for the week I do actually I got a very busy week ahead of me yeah why'd yeah. you go British again I don't know. I like she to do that sometimes. That. She always does I that. talk with accents a lot. She just yeah, it's pretty tell me an accent. Yeah, tell me Float. in the comments. Would you prefer that I was like this on the podcast? Because I can do it if you want. Yeah, yeah, you went from that to oofed on this podcast. <laughs> you <laughs> went like. Oh. I am a cultural woman. What yeah. what what accent is that? What the that the one that she's like doing? What, what part Essex? of England? What Essex. part of England? Is that Essex? Essex. Am I from That's Essex? Like, Mm, I wouldn't say Molly. Nah, not really Molly. Can you May. do British accents like different regions or not really? Yeah, come on, mate. I can do whatever you You're want. You're from Liverpool. Ah, I can do he's Liverpool. from Liverpool. What are you talking about, mate? I'll do a little bit of that. <laughs> can you do Geordie? Jo- nah, Geordie's a bit hard. Geordie's Let's get Geordie. fucking more. Geordie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really do that. <laughs> nah, nah. You know what, guys? Claude's accents are very good. No, nah, they come no, out no, really good. They, they, they are accent very you good. Claude's to do. We'll come out we'll after What, are, what are you going to end the podcast on, Claude? I don't know. What, what, well, are you we we on the spot? done in a while. We haven't done. What did we do? Like, words to describe the pod? Or was, what did we used to do? Words well, now are we going to do accents to end the pod? Accent. Well, you've done the British accent. What, what accent can you give us, Olin? I can give. Um, 
I like Outlands of Nigeria. Yeah, me too. Oh, can you can you wish yeah. the fans? Can you wish yeah. the fans? I'm gonna let you finish the podcast here today, right? For all our football <laughs> fans watching from home, you just can you wish them a great week? Can you tell them to enjoy all the football and that they can catch us? And can you get them? Tell them to subscribe and tell them to like us and follow us on social. <laughs> but imagine it's your dad doing it. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. Yes. Can you please like and subscribe? <laughs> follow us on all the socials. Twitter, we don't have Twitter. <laughs> follow us on Insta, we have Insta. Follow us on TikTok, we have TikTok. Everything is born upside. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you guys next week. And may God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>